and the question was like this. There are two objects. One is moving with two meter per second square. And another is moving with 20 meter per second. This is A, this is B. And the initial separation between them is 100 meters. Initial separation between them is 100 meters. Okay. Just a second. It is taking some time to write. Now suppose they are overtaking or one is overtaking B after T time. Now in that T time, how much B will move? So XB will be half acceleration of B, which is 2 into T square because B does not have any initial velocity. B does not have initial velocity, so X will be XP will be half AT square, and that gives us करना चाहिए मैं शेड्यूल करूं जस्ट अ सेकंड एवरीवन हां Okay. So this will be half into A, which was 2 into T square, and this distance is 100 meter. So this comes out to be T square. Now, this is actually XB, distance moved by B. 
so how much will be distance moved by a if it is overtaking b it will be moving x a so x a will be how much x a will be velocity of a into time because it is also overtaking in the same time so that will be 20 into t that will be 20 into t now if you pay attention this x a is nothing but 100 plus x b x a is nothing but 100 plus x b that means 20 t is equal to 100 plus t square and this gives us t square minus 20 t plus 100 is equal to 0 t square minus 20 t plus 100 is equal to 0 and that gives us t is equal to 20 plus minus under the root 20 plus minus under root 20 square is 400 20 square is 400 minus 4 ac minus 4 ac so 4 into a a is how much 1 into c is how much 100 upon 2 so in this question this is cancelling this for 400 so t comes out to be 10 seconds t comes out to be 10 seconds how many of you got this answer how many of you got this answer so t comes out to be Samarth is saying, how can we say that B has no initial velocity? Because it is not given Samarth. Initial velocity of B is not given. Only initial acceleration is given. That's why we can say. That's why we can say that B has no initial velocity. Okay. Anything can have uh, constant acceleration without having velocity. Why to get confused in that? All right. Okay, good. Question. There is a ball which is dropped from some height. A. There is another ball which is thrown vertically upward. B. <coughs> The speed of projection of B is 50 meter per second. A is dropped from rest. Now if the height between the two is 100 meters. Height between the two is 100 meters. Find time when, when A and B meet. Find time when A and B meet. Please find. Also find the height of meeting point. Also find height of meeting point. Also find height of meeting point. Please find.
Komal is asking, sir, can they meet above H max? Komal, you tell me one thing. If A is being dropped, can it fly by itself? Ram, the question is, B has been projected from ground with speed of 50 meter per second. At the same time, A has been released from height of 100 meter. Now the point is where they are meeting. Where they are meeting. This is the question. Okay. And when they are meeting, you need to find time also and place also. Please give me the answer. Okay, everyone, enough time given, pay attention. Now, suppose B is going up to some height, let's say XB, and A is falling by some distance, let's say XA. So, what you can see is that magnitude of XA plus magnitude of XB should be equal to 100. Now, how much is XA? So XA will be UT plus half a T square. So, 0 into T. We are assuming that they are meeting after time T. So, 0 into T plus half into A. A will be G. I am using minus sign because it is downward. Right? Into T square. 
so if i put value of g that comes out to be x a is equal to minus of 5 t square so magnitude of x a let me put it vector so magnitude of x a will be 5 t square be very clear this is the magnitude this is 5 t square now if you talk about x b xb will be nothing but ut plus half it is square now u b is how much 50 so 50 into t plus half into minus 10 into t square so that is xb that is xb okay and it is upward so xb will be positive so we magnitude will also be the same so xb comes out to be 50t minus 5t square this is equation number 1 this is equation number 2 so from 1 and 2 xa magnitude plus xb magnitude should be equal to 100 that means 5t square plus 50t minus 5t square 100 50t 50 will be t will be 2 seconds now if t is equal to 2 seconds how much will be xp so xp will be 50 into 2 minus 5 into 2 square 50 into 2 becomes 100 minus 5 into 2 square is 20 so xb comes out to be 80 meters xb comes out to be 80 meters this is the answer this is the answer all right all right all of you should be solving these questions next question Can you see the screen? Can you see the screen? 
ओके Atul is saying five seconds.
Okay, everyone, please pay attention. Enough time given. Now, suppose A is traveling the distance of XA. So XA will be how much? XA will be UA into T plus half AA into T square. So that XA comes out to be UA, this is 5 into T plus half into 2 into T square. Correct? I'm leaving it like this. Now, if you talk about XP, so this will be XP. XB will be how much? That will be UB into T plus half AB into T square. So that will be UB is 10 into T plus half into 3 into T square. Now if you observe then XA plus XB XA plus XB is equal to 100. So XA plus XB is equal to 100. This 100 is equal to plus half into 2 into T square plus 20 plus half into 3 into T square. So that plus half 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 into t square and that is equal to 100. So this gives us this gives us 5 t square plus 30 t minus 200 is equal to 0 and this will further give us t square plus 60 minus 40 is equal to 0. So when you simplify this further, t comes out to be minus 6 plus minus under the root of 36 plus 160 upon 2. So t comes out to be minus 6 plus minus root of 196 and that is 14 square if you remember upon 2. So t is equal to minus 6 plus minus 14 upon 2. So t comes out to be 14 minus 6 is 8 upon 2 is 4 seconds. This will be the answer. This will be the answer. Answer will be 4 seconds. Kimaya got the correct answer. Only Kimaya. All right. All right. Noted everyone. Noted everyone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay, so that is how you can solve these type of questions. That's how you can solve these type of <coughs> questions. You must have noticed we have not used the concept of relative motion so far. We'll be studying relative motion in motion in plane and then we are going to use the concept of relative motion in this chapter we are not studying relative motion all right all right now let us move further and we are moving towards graphical analysis of motion graphical analysis of motion Okay, so what is graphical analysis of motion? When study of motion, 
when study of motion of an object when study of motion of an object is done using graphs then such analysis of motion is called then such analysis of motion is called graphical analysis of motion okay so basically what we do in this type of motion study that we draw graphs and based on those graphs we interpret that what is happening okay so we'll be seeing all that so case 1 when object is at rest when object is at rest so if object is at rest right in that first thing is displacement time graph displacement time graph so you tell me when object is at rest is it moving no so when it is not moving its displacement time graph or you can say displacement will be zero so if displacement is zero if displacement is zero then displacement time graph will be actually time axis that time is increasing time is increasing but displacement is remaining zero only time is increasing but displacement is remaining zero so that will be our displacement time graph next comes velocity time graph so for velocity time graph this is time this is velocity so for velocity time graph again as displacement is zero velocity will be zero so velocity is also zero so if velocity is zero because object is not moving at all velocity time graph will be time axis only correct similarly we can draw i am writing here acceleration time graph acceleration time graph so this is time this is acceleration so again your acceleration time graph will be time axis why because object is not moving at all there is no displacement no velocity when there is no velocity how much will be the change in velocity it will be zero change in velocity is zero so acceler basically acceleration is zero so your acceleration time graph is time axis so these are the graphs when object remains at rest displacement time velocity time acceleration time any doubt in this anyone any doubt in this when object is at rest okay no doubt very good next comes when object is moving with constant velocity when object is moving with constant velocity so case 2 case 2 when object is moving with constant velocity
when object is moving with constant velocity so when object moves with constant velocity that means velocity is equal to constant so suppose velocity is equal to v suppose constant velocity is equal to v not so how much will be displacement so displacement x will be v not into t displacement x will be v not into t if i compare this with y is equal to mx plus c if i compare this with y is equal to mx plus c so what i observe is that in place of y we have displacement in place of y we have displacement and let me use s for displacement let me use s for displacement so that you don't get confused so s is there in place of y and t is there in place of x and v not is constant so basically this is representing a straight line passing through origin so your displacement time graph your displacement time graph will be your displacement time graph will be a straight line passing through origin so this will be your graph s is equal to v not t okay now the slope suppose this angle is theta so tan theta will be m and that will be equal to v not so from here we get star point from here we get a star point slope of everyone please keep your mics muted slope of displacement time graph gives velocity which velocity instantaneous slope of displacement time graph gives velocity okay to be more specific it is instantaneous velocity all right good so this is your displacement time graph now what will be your velocity time graph so velocity time graph now if you remember velocity is constant velocity is constant so if velocity is constant then it will be like this then it will be like this so this is v is equal to constant okay so you can see that velocity is neither increasing nor decreasing so it's a straight line parallel to it's a straight line parallel to time axis okay okay now here also i can give you a star point slope of velocity time graph slope of velocity time graph gives acceleration slope of velocity time graph gives acceleration so in this case you can see that slope is 0 degree because line is parallel to time axis so how much angle the line is making with time axis 0 degree so tan 0 will be 0 so acceleration will be 0 all right all right another concept area of area of velocity time graph 
area of velocity time graph gives displacement area of velocity time graph gives displacement mind it area of velocity time graph gives displacement all right now when velocity is constant when velocity is constant how much will be acceleration so acceleration will be zero acceleration will be zero so your acceleration time graph will be your acceleration time graph will be basically time axis okay your acceleration time graph will be time axis why because velocity is constant if velocity is constant that means it is not changing if velocity is constant that means it is not changing if it is not changing that means it is remaining constant correct and that means acceleration is zero all right so this was the situation when velocity of object is constant now we are moving to next point when now we are moving to next point and that point is when acceleration is constant okay so next case 3 when acceleration of object is constant okay now a is equal to constant a is equal to constant right we remember we know that if a is equal to constant then certain equations which equations as acceleration is constant as acceleration is constant we can apply equations of motion equations of motion which one v is equal to u plus at s is equal to ut plus half at square and v square is equal to u square plus 2 as so we can apply all these three <coughs> and we are when we are applying all these three then how things will happen let us see so when acceleration is constant first thing we are going to draw is displacement time graph so displacement time graph displacement time graph <coughs> so as we can see when acceleration is constant when acceleration is constant displacement is given as displacement is given as s is equal to ut plus half at square s is equal to ut plus half at square right now this equation this equation is a quadratic equation this equation is a 
quadratic equation. Hence, Is it visible now? Hello? Okay. So this equation is a quadratic equation, hence it will represent a parabola. Okay. So graph will look like how the graph will look like. Pay attention. I am drawing displacement time graph, right? So this is time, this is displacement. So if A is positive, if A is positive, that means A is greater than zero, parabola will be opening upward. Parabola will be opening upward and in this equation if you put t is equal to 0 s will be 0 that means at t is equal to 0 particle is at origin and as parabola is opening upward it will go like this it will go like this you might ask sir why we have not drawn it in this direction we have not drawn it because time cannot be negative time cannot be negative okay so a is greater than zero a is greater than zero this will be the graph all right all right okay now what if a is negative so parabola will be opening downward in that case so if parabola is opening downward in that case, then the graph will be slightly different. So the graph will be like this in that case. Graph will be like this and this is when A is less than zero. So you can see that parabola is opening downward. Parabola is opening downward all right if you have any doubt please feel free to ask if you have any doubt please feel free to ask no doubt anyone good Kimai Singh, sir, could you please explain those graphs again? The screen is lagging a lot. I could not understand. See, what I am saying is, Kimaya, that S is equal to ut plus half a t square. It is double power in t and single power in S. Such equations are called quadratic equations. Such equations are called quadratic equations, right? Now, what do you mean by quadratic equation? That means double power in any one variable and single power in other variable. 
when these equations represent parabola now the parabola has only two options either it will be opening upward or it will be opening downward correct so what are the conditions for parabola to open upward if a is greater than 0 it will open upward if a is less than 0 then it will be opening downward now ramchandra is asking sir what if a is equal to 0 ramchandra in that case it will not be a parabola because it is not a quadratic equation any more if t square is multiplying with 0 there is no t square and if there is no t square it's not a quadratic equation at all and if it is not a quadratic equation at all it will not be representing parabola all right any doubt so far anyone other than this <clears throat> yes if acceleration is zero then v is constant and that will be the previous case which we have already discussed right sohas any other question anyone please do not hesitate feel free to ask okay okay let's move further let's move further good good now there can be other special cases see when it was ut plus half at square we are getting this kind of shape but if s is proportional to t square or s is equal to let's say at square half at square or k into t square in that case the graph will be slightly different and the graph will be basically this is t this is s and it will be like this it will be like the mm, like this so this is s is proportional to t square this is s is proportional to t square no it is not hyperbola sohas it is also parabola it is also parabola okay this is also parabola only thing is that ut part that means the multiplication of single power of t that is not there in this only double power is there okay that's why it is going like this it is parabola this will be opening upward if k is greater than 0 if k is greater than 0 that means coefficient of t square is <coughs> greater than 0 now what if coefficient of t square is less than 0 then this parabola will be opening downward then this parabola will be opening downward so this is s is proportional to t square when k is less than 0 k is less than 0 so again this displacement time graph and this is a parabola let me write it also so that people don't get confused all of them are only parabola all of them are only parabola okay understood any doubt any question any doubt any question okay okay so this was the displacement time graph when acceleration is constant now we are moving towards velocity time graph velocity time graph velocity time graph so what velocity time graph will tell you pay attention we have v is equal to u plus at if i compare it with y is equal to c plus mx y is equal to c plus mx so basically it will represent a straight line this will represent a straight line this will represent a straight line right 
right now what the graph will look like so let us see so this is t and this is v this is t and this is v so i'll be drawing different different graphs and explaining also that what is representing what so in this graph u is equal to 0 and a is equal to positive okay this is your vt graph when acceleration is constant and u is equal to 0 you can see that it is passing through origin so when it is passing through origin that means initial velocity is 0 okay now next part this is t this is v and the graph goes like this so in this case what is happening u is greater than 0 a is equal to positive a is equal to positive and u is greater than 0 now in third case this is t this is v and we are going slightly downward also so the graph is like this and what it is representing a is equal to positive u is less than 0 that means initial velocity is negative initial velocity is negative all right if you have any doubt in this anyone please feel free to ask please feel free to ask if you have any doubt please feel free to ask okay good good next next so this is t this is v and this time we are going to draw graph for like this now pay attention what it is representing it is representing u is equal to 0 because it is passing through origin and a is equal to negative that acceleration of object is negative acceleration of object is negative okay so u is equal to 0 and a is equal to negative all right next now in second case we want a to be negative and u to be positive so this will be the graph this will be the graph in this graph u is equal to positive and a is equal to negative u is equal to positive and a is equal to negative all right remember all these cases are when acceleration is constant all these cases are when acceleration is constant okay okay now we are moving to next part and in this part we want both negative this is time this is velocity 
and your acceleration negative and velocity negative graph will be like this so in this u is equal to negative and a is equal to negative it will be like this u is equal to negative and a is equal to negative all right any doubt any question any doubt any question good good so please note everyone quickly and then i'll be giving you question then i'll be giving you question noted now we have talked about uh, velocity time let us talk about quickly acceleration time graph also when acceleration is constant so acceleration time graph now there are only two possibilities there are only two possibilities it is already given that acceleration is constant it is already given that acceleration is constant so either acceleration is positive constant so here a is equal to positive constant or the next thing will be or the next thing will be a is equal to negative constant a is equal to negative constant okay so these are the possibilities these are the possibilities all right any doubt any question good good now before we move further let me give you one more star point area of acceleration time graph area of acceleration time graph gives change in velocity change in velocity in the interval in the interval please remember many times student answer that area of acceleration time graphs gives velocity no it is not velocity it is change in velocity it is change in velocity you need to be particular in giving the correct answer okay okay good now question question so from the given at graph from the given at graph find number 1 velocity at t is equal to 10 seconds number 2 displacement in 10 seconds okay given that at t is equal to 0 particle was rest particle was at rest okay please solve
Noshan is saying sorry to 50 meter displacement. Hi, sorry. And where is velocity? Okay, everyone, please pay attention. So if you find area, that area will give you, area will be 10 into five, and that will be giving you change in velocity. So area is equal to delta V is equal to 50, and as initial velocity is zero, so V final minus V initial is equal to 50, so V final is equal to 50 plus zero is equal to 50 meters per second, right? <clears throat> now, if you simply go by this and if you try to find displacement, you'll be finding yourself in a difficult position. But from this graph, you know that acceleration is constant. So A is equal to five meters per second square u is how much zero t is how much 10 seconds s is equal to question mark can we solve this yes we can s is equal to ut plus half t square so s will be zero plus half into a into t square 10 square 10 square will be 100 100 into 5 will be 500 500 by 2 will be 250 meters so this will be the answer this will be the answer okay okay everyone good good can we move further all right next question A car starts from rest and moves with and moves with constant acceleration, constant acceleration alpha for some time. After that, It retards with it retards with beta meters per second square and finally stops and finally stops. Find number one maximum velocity of Least find. 
just to tell you tomorrow your chemistry class will not be there okay tomorrow your chemistry class will not be there today also actually your chemistry class was scheduled but it is not there okay in place of that botany ma'am will be taking the class today tomorrow only physics and geology class will be there only two lectures will be there tomorrow okay Notion is saying alpha beta t upon alpha plus beta z max. Okay, everyone, please pay attention. We are going to solve this question by two methods. One is graphical method because we are studying graphical method, and one by equations method. So method. So the question is saying this is T, this is V. Okay, we are trying to draw VT graph. So the question is saying the acceleration is alpha. Okay, so this is constant acceleration. 
and then constant retardation. This is alpha and this is beta. Now why we have drawn this graph? You may also pay attention to that. What made us draw this graph? See, when you draw VT graph, in VT graph, acceleration is also present. If you find slope, you find acceleration. In VT graph, displacement is also present. Why? Because the area of VT graph gives displacement. So this question is talking about two things, velocity, displacement, and acceleration. All three can be seen here. All three can be seen here. That's why we have drawn this. Okay. So this is, let's say, time T1. And this is the total time T. And total time T is given to us. Okay. Total journey is total time. So, basically, this angle is equal to is equal to V max upon T1. So basically, your V max comes out to be. This is so beta is is equal to V max upon if we talk about magnitude, so that will be V max upon T minus T one. So that gives you V max is equal to beta into T minus T one. So if you compare one and two. So by one and two, alpha T one is equal to beta times T minus beta T one minus beta T one. So T one into alpha plus beta is equal to beta T. So T one comes out to be beta T upon alpha plus beta so basically this is the time when velocity became maximum t1 is the time at which velocity became maximum right so from 1 v max comes out to be how much alpha beta t upon alpha plus beta So that's how we got maximum velocity. Now let us talk about displacement. So V max we have got this came out to be alpha beta T upon alpha plus beta. So if we find area of this triangle. So displacement. Is equal to area of triangle. Area of triangle so that will be s is equal to 1 by 2 into base is t into height is v max so s comes out to be 1 by 2 into v max is alpha beta t upon alpha plus beta into t so s comes out to be alpha beta t square upon 2 alpha plus beta. This will be the answer. This will be the answer. Please note. Good Suhas. OK, everyone. OK. Now the same thing can be done with the help of equations also. Method two. So during zero to T one. 
सो वी मैक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो प्लस अल्फा टी वन दिस इज इक्वेशन नंबर वन नाउ ड्यूरिंग टी वन टू कैपिटल टी सो जीरो इज इक्वल टू जीरो इज इक्वल टू दिस इज वी इज इक्वल टू यू प्लस एटी यू इज वी मैक्स माइनस बीटा इंटू टाइम टाइम इज टी माइनस टी वन टाइम इज टी माइनस टी वन सो फ्रॉम वन एंड टू अल्फा टी वन माइनस बीटा टाइम्स टी माइनस टी वन एंड वेन यू सॉल्व दिस यू गेट टी वन इज इक्वल टू बीटा टी अपॉन अल्फा प्लस बीटा एंड देन यू कैन सॉल्व इजिली then you can solve easily okay everyone okay if you have any doubts any questions please feel free to ask if you have any doubts any questions please feel free to ask okay tomorrow as i told you your class will be of physics and geology okay okay everyone thank you so much